Its mayor, uh, Patricia DeLille, says the city has experienced a spike in the land invasions and associated protests incidents, 65, in fact, in a six-day period alone this month. Anti-land invasion and law enforcement agencies have been working around the clock lately to stop people from illegal occupations. And it comes as the Western Cape faces an acute housing shortage with many in disadvantaged communities leave, living in informal settlements prone to flooding during the raining season and fires during the summer or spring. The events witnessed recently at places like Skalo, Philippi and Kailicha are a clear indication of the crisis. We're joined now from our Cape Town studios by the MEC for Human Settlements in the Western Cape, Bongosi Matikizela. Good evening to you and thank you for talking to us. Uh, firstly, let's just look at uh, the issue of the housing backlog in the province. How are you dealing with that and what some are calling uh, a lack of urban planning really? Good evening, Borani. Um, it is indeed a challenging situation, uh, compounded, of course, by limited resources and a massive, massive uh, um, challenge of demand database that has more than 500,000 uh, families. I think the best thing we can do, though, Borani, is to make sure that the principle of first come, first serve is applied. Because I think where we are vulnerable as government is in a situation where people wait for 20, 30 years before they get a house and only to find that there are people uh, who have registered three years ago, five years ago, and yet they already own homes. So that is what we need to get right, especially at local level uh, from municipalities. So I will be engaging uh, all the municipalities of the Western Cape in the next two weeks so that we can get to the bottom of this. Your critics will say, particularly of your party, the Democratic Alliance, will say that the province uh, has not prioritized disadvantaged communities enough. And this is basically an issue that's coming back to bite you. <laughs> um, if you look at the policy, Bongani, um, you can only spend housing budget on the poor. You can't spend it on anyone else. Because the criteria that was set... <clears throat> makes it impossible for you to spend this money you know, on rich people. So th those critics, I mean, are either ill-informed or they are playing to the gallery. Well, the issue isn't so much whether you're spending money on housing for the rich, but the issue is around spatial planning. And the, crit the criticism is that Cape Town, in particular, remains locked in apartheid spatial, spatial planning. Uh, there's even efforts, uh, they're saying, to gentrify the city and to keep affordable housing on the outskirts. Well, it, again, it would be, politic it, it would be politically posture, posturing for anyone to suggest that this is a problem that is unique to Cape Town only. But it's particularly I mean, acute in Cape Town, is it not? That's not true. That's not true. Um, if you look at, let, let us look at the report um, of many independent institutions, um, institutions like your state's essay, um, which clearly indicates um, that if you look at the Gini coefficiency in places like Cape Town, it has improved since the DA took over. Um, many people are peddling these lies that Cape Town is the most unequal city uh, in South Africa, actually is the least unequal city in South Africa, if you look at the report that is coming from State SA. So we, re we really need to dispel the myth and the perception that is perpetuated by those people who have their, polit their own political agenda. The issue of special planning is a historic one. It is a fact that the whole country is, gra is grappling with this issue. Um, so it would be disingenuous then to only, to only blame Western Cape and Cape Town when it comes to that. We've seen a number of hot spots popping up, as I said in my introduction. Uh, we know that you're going to be meeting with uh, the, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the city of Cape Town to try and iron out some of these problems. The mayor of the city has uh, made some pronouncements. Uh, who's in charge of this process? Look, we, we, we are the government in this province. I mean, um, the, the province, the city, all of us must work together. Uh, to deal with this challenge. Uh, we, I mean, we cannot fold our arms and say it's the city's problem and therefore the city must deal with it on their own. 
Um, so all of us um, have a responsibility to engage our communities and sit around the table in order to find solutions to deal with the problem. And that is why um, you might have seen that while the mayor is dealing with some of these issues on the other side, I also have to deal with some of these issues on the other side. Um, as I said, we have committed to have a meeting on the 5th um, so that we can look at the entire plan um, from the city of Cape Town and see how do we deal uh, with the prioritization of the most deserving areas, as I said, because the reality is that we'll never be able to build houses for everyone who needs them. But what we need to get right, Bongani, is to make sure that those who've been waiting for years are prioritized over and above those who have been waiting for a few years. One of the things you've been quoted as saying today is that a number of political parties are using the issue of land expropriation without compensation as a political tool rather than offering solutions that, that will help the people on the ground. What do you mean? Well, I mean exactly that. I mean, immediately after the tabling of that motion, um, sponsored by the EFF, supported by the ANC, we have seen the wave of protests and land invasions across the country. And I think uh, Gauteng and Western Cape are the hardest hit province because of that. And um, people are saying themselves that um, that particular motion, how they interpret it is that they can now just go anywhere and grab land. Um, so those political parties must take responsibility for this mess. And um, what is also amazing, uh, Bongani, is that um, the ANC went, went to a two-day summit and um, resolved and, and, and to what exactly we've been telling them, that you don't need to amend Section 25 uh, to speed up the land reform. Um, so I think it was irresponsible uh, and it was just a populist stance taken for political expedience. All right, we'll leave it there. Of course, we'll continue to monitor the hotspots uh, in the Western Cape and indeed around the country. We'll have an interview with the ANC a little later on this evening. That was Bongingo Simatikizela, the Western Cape MEC for Human Settlement.